All right. Well, thank you for joining me and my guests here again on the Lieutenant Governor's uh, FaceTime discussion of things happening at the State House, politics in Vermont, issues, people, things that are happening around the state. Uh, today we're actually talking about uh, the movie that's going to start, uh, kick off my 2019 movie series, uh, which is Thursday, and it's uh, a movie called Reinventing Power. And this movie series has been a, a series we launched last year uh, with uh, encouragement from the Sierra Club, uh, who we have uh, Rob here with uh, that organization. And we launched this movie series, we showed nine different films across uh, 11 venues around the state, and over 700 Vermonters showed up. And part of these conversations are a little bit of networking, then we show the movie, and then we've hosted a town meeting discussion, questions and answers on a whole range of issues. Uh, like I said, this Thursday, um, it, and it'll be every fourth Thursday of the month, I should add, uh, is Reinventing Power at the State House. The doors are gonna open at 5.30, and then the movie starts at 6 and the discussions afterwards. You can learn more about the upcoming series uh, and films we've shown uh, by visiting my website uh, www.ltgov.vermont.gov. You can also click uh, on the monthly movie series tab on the menu on the left. Uh, you can also go to my Facebook page at VTLTGov for more information. And uh, today I'm joined by Rob Kidd from the Sierra Club and Olivia Campbell Anderson from Renewable Energy Vermont. Uh, we're gonna talk about the impact of the movie series in general and a little bit about this upcoming film, uh, Reinventing Power, which is about renewable energy in communities and how it's actually rebuilt some of the economies in different areas where sometimes the economy has started to uh, flag a little bit um, in, our, in our economy. So um, we're gonna get some things going here. I wanna first welcome you both and maybe ask you each to speak for a minute about what you do, what is Sierra Club about, what is uh, Renewable Energy Vermont about, and uh, Olivia, why don't we start? Yeah, thanks so much for having us, and thank you so much for doing this film series. I think it's so important to bring folks together, talk about issues, and be brainstorming. Um, so my name is Olivia Campbell Anderson. I lead Renewable Energy Vermont. We are the Clean Energy Trade Association, so we are working to help Vermonters uh, deploy renewable electricity, heating, and transportation throughout the state. Wow, that's awesomely succinct. But it's a pretty amazing organization. It's doing a lot around renewable energy, uh, which is a huge piece of our change around how we're impacting our climate and climate change. Uh, we're clearly seeing impacts of that here in Vermont, obviously around the world as well. Uh, and it's really a great organization. I know constantly looking for opportunities of ways to implement more renewable energy in Vermont, on home scale, business scale, community scale, uh, and also ways to, I think uh, many of us are looking at ways to try to make it so renewable energy is accessible to people across different economic streams. And I think maybe some of the past people feel like, well, that's great, but it's outside of my reach. I think a lot of people in this building with, with the brain trust of the people that you're involved with are really trying to explore ways to make sure renewable energy is more accessible to more people. Is that a fair? Yeah, and we actually, um, last year, launched a new coalition to work on that topic, mm -hmm. uh, Vermont Renewable Energy Access Coalition, um, and uh, we'll be talking more about that because what we know is that renewable energy reduces energy burdens and saves money and also saves the climate. So there's so many reasons, and we need to make sure if we're going to meet our commitments and grow our economy, that everyone is able to access those benefits. Absolutely. Well, thank you. And uh, Rob, uh, Sierra Club. What does Sierra Club do? Okay. Who are you? Yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah. For those of you who don't know the Sierra Club, uh, we're the nation's largest and oldest conservation-based organization uh, formed in 1892 in California. We have chapters all across the country, and most of the chapter level is a lot of volunteers. So as a staff person for the Vermont chapter here, I try to consciously put together programs to get my membership involved, um, get my volunteer leaders involved, and to get to engage the communities on these issues. So uh, particularly, like you know, for years, a lot of the Sierra Club work was on land conservation and outdoor access. Uh, but as you know, the impacts of climate become uh, more prevalent, we've switched focus and made climate one of the primary goals. However, going back to the equity issue that you just kind of addressed, is we understand that 
a lot of our work maybe in the past wasn't as focused on that. So we also have more of a social justice lens, lens to that issue uh, work. Um, locally here in Vermont, I've been involved with many different issues, particularly recently a lot of the water quality issues, land conservation as well, but we just switched and are gonna be focusing a lot on transportation related issues because 47% of our climate emissions are caused from transportation and it's the biggest economic burden from a lot of folks with low incomes. Mm, definitely. And actually, um, we probably have you here today, not only because uh, both of your organizations are co-sponsoring this movie coming up on Thursday, but uh, Rob, you actually came to my office over a year ago and said, hey, what do you think about this idea? So what, what prompted you to think of the idea or why do you think this is important and, and what have you seen it do so far, because uh, you've certainly watched a few of the movies. Yep. <clears throat> um, so the idea really came from you, even though you said I planted the seed in you, maybe you planted the seed in me. Um, <laughs> um, but basically, I remember when you were, you were running for your uh, first term as Lieutenant Governor, we interviewed you from our volunteer membership, and one of the questions that everybody was really impressed with you is, when we asked you about how would you treat your organization, uh, your office, as to us as environmental advocates, uh, you responded not just to the atypical, I have an open door policy. Your, your answer was, I'm gonna invite people in, bring new people to the conversation, get them involved, because in order to get these issues addressed, we need to have them involved, and that was what something really resonated with us. So you were, you know, opening up your term and like, oh, well, uh, Lieutenant Governor, how would you like? Before any of the film showings here in Mount Hillier, we've had people randomly walking around the hallways trying to find the cafeteria. So it shows that people are new to this building and it's made this a comfortable place, not just be this intimidating thing uh, where a bunch of us in suits and ties are wearing, uh, you know, where everyday people can come and participate. Exactly, and actually, um, that is something I've tried to do at the office, both in my travels around the state, whether it's with the movie series or going into schools, as I have a couple times this past week, talking with fourth and fifth graders and seventh graders in different schools nearby about uh, how the process works and that it actually not just works in a textbook format of how it works, but how does it work when people are engaged in our democracy and people come out, have conversations with each other about maybe a specific topic, and the topic can change from week to week or month to month, uh, but then actually communicate their feelings to their legislators. Sometimes people feel like you vote every year or a couple of years, whether it's local or state offices, and then just let those people do the work. And the reality is legislators really uh, benefit, and our state benefits from more input from folks, your views on issues, your knowledge about issues, because uh, remember, legislators actually have very little to no individual staff. And so um, these conversations are part of that, to say, come on out, go to meetings with your legislators, call your legislators, email your legislators, my office, the governor's office, and say what you think. Uh, when I travel the country as lieutenant governor and meet with some other lieutenant governors, they're amazed at the accessibility that exists here because of our sort of small and intimate size. We have that opportunity, you have that opportunity to take advantage of that small scale and really have a louder voice than a lot of people in other states do. Uh, and, and actually this series is part of that. Uh, so um, Olivia, I don't know if you, you've attended a few movies over the last couple of years and watched the panel discussion. Uh, you know, what do you, how do you feel that works for people or ideas that get exchanged? Well, one of the things I love so much about this is one, each time you come, you're going to learn something new. You typically will also meet someone new. Mm -hmm. um, and while we have so much ingenuity and talent here in Vermont, I love that some of these films show new ideas and the best ideas and how other communities have overcome challenges or facing them. Mm -hmm. um, and so that brings new ideas to Vermont. So. It's great. I love the I love the design of how you come, you learn, and then you talk, and it gives ideas and sparks conversation um, between each other. And then, folks, you've had you've designed it so often. The panels are people who have experience mm -hmm. working on those issues that people may have heard about in the film, and so you come and you can ask questions 
about what's really going on in Vermont. You can share your ideas. Um, when you know we had a session before, folks shared ideas about how we could solve those problems, mm -hmm. and uh, that's really impactful. Um, the other thing, of course, is you so often bring some of the fruits of your labor from the farm. And uh, I actually, uh, I brought my daughter uh, to when we had our first uh, showing of Reinventing Power, mm -hmm. and the melon is, is still phenomenal. Um, that was the best melon uh, that she had. <laughs> She's still talking she about, about it all. I remember it. It was, was so good. That was a ridiculously large so, and tasty melon. But yes, yeah. it was. And you missed the pork on the pizza that one time. Well, there's, <laughs> yeah, there's different things, different different meetings. And we're going to have a little more of an hors d'oeuvres maybe than a full-on meal each time. That got a little bit uh, challenging to coordinate. But uh, but there will often be snacks. Maybe it's carrots. Maybe it's melons. Who knows? Uh, each time it will be a surprise maybe. Um, but uh, yeah, one of the things I've actually really hoped that these uh, movies could do is also help. Uh, we have many organizations, these two being sort of environmental focused, but, but really expanding the range of your focus to include the social inequities of some of the environmental battles that have happened and, and working to see that interconnectedness of, of many of our social injustice issues. And we have co-sponsors from uh, NAACP to 350.org to different unions, environmental groups, other social and racial justice issue groups and at each event there's an opportunity for folks to learn about those groups as well and so as, an, as a citizen out there that may feel alone thinking about an issue suddenly you start to create a connectivity of oh I'm not the only one thinking about this oh we can make change around this because there's actually more than just me and what can we do next so hopefully it continues to be that sort of a positive uh, building did do either of you I uh, got a list of movies here maybe you haven't seen them all but have a particular movie that either might have given you a new insight uh, to a topic you didn't know about and or, you know, do you stick with the things you kind of have always had a passion for or anything, either one of you? So outside of the movie we're about to show, Reinventing Power, which I think is the most optimistic of all the films that we showed. Um, so please come to that one. <laughs> uh, the one I probably took home the most was the Maiden Dagenham film. Mm -hmm. And the reason why, it was actually not because of the film, it was the discussion afterwards and the people we had um, commenting, and in particular, uh, your wife had mm -hmm. made such a strong comment about supporting labor and supporting women in labor. She talked about nurturing the relationship with women. Women in labor, meaning in the workforce, right. but we should also <laughs> support our women in labor. <laughs> our women birth. I think what you meant, though, was the yeah. workforce, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and, and she made the comment about how she, she was mentoring some of the women's staff on your farm, and like, you know, and ask for that raise instead of, because there's like that the waiting, like, to, waiting yeah. ask, and like, you know, that, that, like, that part of it. So that was like probably the thing. I took the most out of all these films outside the issue works that I did was that mm -hmm. and completely I've already had experiences working with your wife on other issues over the years but that dynamic she brought to the table so those of you who don't know it Lieutenant Governor is just part of it his wife is part of his team and so is his chief of staff Meg <laughs> I do not do it alone I do it with all, right. of, all of these great yeah, organizations so. I mean that's part of I think looking at this office and uh, really elective office in general um, in a different way you know it's not actually this person right here it's this whole team of the whole state and different people giving input so thank you I appreciate that and I don't know if you had a favorite one um, you might not have gotten to as many Rob sort yeah. of religiously <laughs> comes to these which is uh, wonderful and I appreciate it but uh, anything you know I, I really did love reinventing power because it um, uh, one of the things too though it showed uh, in some of the stories about how other communities outside Vermont are benefiting from renewable energy and, and some of the same challenges that they went through with this transition. Because it's a, it's a tremendous transition that we're going through and change is hard. Yeah. And so thinking, learning from others about uh, the benefits that change can bring or how they address the problems. Um, whether it's that aesthetic was, or whether it's economic inequities, yeah. they try to tackle some of those. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, sorry, I didn't mean to nope, no. put the words in your mouth there. <laughs> um, and uh, do you, I guess after this one, we might show another short video, maybe after the movie this week. Is that the plan? Can you yeah. tell us a little bit about that? So we, um, 
the uh, the reinventing power show features uh, uh, town other towns and states all across the country, um, and we have our own working Vermonters short films, and which features folks who um, are here right in Vermont um, working to bring uh, bring us clean local renewable electricity. Um, so the the short films feature. Folks that are in um, manufacturing, uh, folks that are managing uh, renewable sites in the state, um, uh, students, um, and so it's it's interesting then to bring it home and then think about how can how can we grow. Um, one of the incredible things about Vermont and our our uh, growing climate economy is that is that given the the success that we've had, um, you know, with clean energy uh, employing about six percent of all working Vermonters mm -hmm. now, um, that uh, that that it, it's really we've had tremendous job growth and tr brought tremendous opportunity for the state and enabled a lot of um, of young Vermonters to either come back or to stay. Mm -hmm. um, after they've received their degree and so having them tell their story and share their experiences um, to bring it home I think uh, uh, is like icing icing on the cake here. Mm -hmm. Oh definitely and um, I, I look forward to seeing some of those little little snippets uh, that, that'll be interesting and uh, one of the things that I've actually felt like it, we we were lucky to be a part of is this shift in timing when people are re-engaging in a way. Uh, you know, there are folks uh, like or not be so happy about the current president. I think one thing that has elevated is public participation on all sides. Now, I would always hope that the dialogue and the discussion would be a little more positive and productive than sometimes it is uh, when, when different sides and different groups have come together. And I think we're lucky in Vermont that generally Dialogues of difference can actually still be productive and respectful, um, but I have seen an uptick in involvement. And I don't know whether you two could briefly talk about whether your organizations are seeing more people either express interest in, you know, installing, which is sort of an economic and environmental decision, um, and or interest in engaging in that beyond their own economic and. Um, and energy consumption, but I mean, what are we? Who are we? What is this yeah. going on? Are you are you seeing that? I have energy? seen that. I think there is. I think there's a real increased sense of urgency, and one of the things that we most most love about Vermont is you know the fact that we do work together and mm -hmm. we can all work together, and and when we do that, there's no end to what we can accomplish, and so as long as we keep that overarching goal in mind, mm -hmm. um, it, it's pretty incredible. I've, you know, I've seen an increase in folks engaging and an increase in the sense of urgency, uh, particularly among, um, you know, also our students and younger, younger Vermonters. Mm -hmm. Did you have fun with that? Oh, I have lots of thoughts on that one. Uh, okay. you, you, we've definitely seen a lot more positive people looking to do something. Uh, you know, Sierra Club membership is at an all-time high. Uh, across the country, not just here in Vermont, like I hear it from all my colleagues across the country, their membership are breaking the record records for them. Hmm. Uh, but even here, you see the activism. We we had our People's Climate Rally here a year and a half ago uh, on the state of Lawn. Four to five thousand people attended. Uh, you know, we have the big women's march from two years ago. Uh, right, that shut like, down, shut down, right. shut down Mount yeah. Pillier. I mean, people are looking for to do something, but they're looking for solutions. And you see it now with our new incoming class here, 40 new members to the House here, and there's a couple new positive yeah. uh, members in the Senate. Um, yesterday, um, the, the Legislative Climate Solutions Caucus, the room was like standing room. It's it never literally like was standing room only. And there mm -hmm. was like, people you know, were out the door. Might have to right. be in room 11 instead of yes. room 10. Yeah, we're mad to move it. Yeah, so I mean, so there's a lot of really energy out there for change and finding solutions and there's a lot of grassroots groups merging like events that I would do that I would maybe expect 20 people at one time now we're getting 50 and 60 people like we did an event on, our, on, um, on the Bud Rail Cars in Barry uh, with a, a, all of us rail and it was the quickest I've ever filled up 
any of my RSVP pages ever. Right. Like normally, I'm not gonna take. You know, I had to push out emails five times to get people to come. So something like people want to find solutions. So I think we're in a promising time, right? Despite what is happening down in D.C., people are trying to find the solutions in their home and their town. That's some right. of the work you're trying to do is get us connected. Well, and I think we're not going to, um, there is, uh, we're, Vermont is moving forward, and we're not going to let what's happening in Washington, D.C. hold us back. Mm -hmm. um, because we've made commitments, we know what we need to do. As Vermonters, we, you know, we meet our commitments. Right. And, um, and we come together and get things done. And so I think we're seeing a lot more interest in uh, progressing solutions with a real sense of urgency because uh, there's great frustration that, you know, for several years it, it's been feeling like we have real issues, really, whether you're talking about, you know, affordable health care, whether you're talking about finding um, child care, uh, if you're a working family, um, you know, living wages, you know, we, we, um, we, we, I think there's a lot of frustration and it's time for action. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, and we well, can do it. We can do it here. Well, With well, your help. Thanks to <laughs> some of your, your help. Uh, your, and I think yeah, that's a great, everyone's. yeah, that's a great upbeat um, comment to sort of close on. It's amazing how fast time does fly. Uh, but we just uh, as we wrap up, I uh, want to thank you both for being here. Thank folks for watching. And just remind viewers that uh, we've got Reinventing Power Thursday, January 24th at the State House in the cafeteria, uh, 530 uh, to show up and six o'clock for the movie. Uh, in February, we're going to be showing a movie called The Devil We Know. It is focused on uh, PFOAs and water. We obviously have this huge issue down in uh, Bennington, but uh, we also have water issues up near Coventry and what uh, what is the, the industry or business um, uh, responsibility when the groundwater and people's water gets polluted to a point where it actually affects people's health? And, uh, you know, we had a bill vetoed last year that would have put the responsibility on those companies to monitor health so that people get the earliest and best treatment they can to prevent illnesses from getting to a, a worse place. And the devil we know just really highlights how sometimes industry uh, knows what they're doing and continues to do it, which is, which is about as insidious as it can get. Uh, and in March, we're going to be showing a movie, White Like Me, and it looks at racism in our society. I think the gentleman's name is Tim Wise, uh, and he's been a real um, great speaker about uh, different issues around implicit bias, the, the built-in biases, and even uh, racism that we have in ourselves that we don't even recognize that we have. And I think sometimes folks get very defensive when you go, wait, I'm not racist, uh, when you know, it's actually okay to admit when you start thinking about something in a, in a language and realizing, oh, our societal language inherently carries with it some racist overtones from, you know, 30, 40, 50, 70 years ago. Uh, and we each have to look at ourselves and learn and sort of unlearn um, some of the things we say or do uh, and even some ways we think, or at least be able to critique ourselves. I think sometimes we start to point fingers at others and it's really important to sometimes just reflect on ourselves and that movie I think is gonna help us with that. Uh, please, if you have ideas about movies or if you wanna host a movie in your community some point during the year and help organize or even just suggest that your community might be ripe for a, a movie showing and you might have a location or a um, movie you think would be good for your community and you'd like me to come to your community, help bring out these 20 or maybe 50 people uh, to have one of these kinds of conversations Please visit the website and uh, communicate with my office at ltgov at vermont.gov or you can comment through this Facebook site uh, at vtltgov. And uh, thank you both again and uh, we'll see you next week. Yeah, see you Thursday. Thank you, Governor. Thank you.